Hello everyone and welcome to week six of my Christmas Tag Tuesday series. I had so much fun doing these weekly videos in November that I wanted to continue it on for the rest of this year. This week I'm mainly going to be using these stamp sets here. These are from past catalogues but they are still available online. What happens with a lot of stamp sets and these still have the thin cuts available with them as well is that they go into the online section of our websites so they are still available to order even though they don't show in any current catalog the other thing that i'm going to be doing is giving a little tip with how to stamp this i've made like a little template or a jig in my misty so that i can get all the stamping done for this element here because you do need to do the thin cut first and then line it up and if you're doing a production line a misty is really good for that and it also helps if you want to get a really crisp stamped image on something like this so hang around for that trick. And of course, I'm going to be using the buildable tags. The other thing I'm going to be using is something that I have problems with using, specialty paper or products. In this case, the gold foil printed acetate. I'm sorry if this is glaring a bit. It's a bit hard to film things like acetate without the glare. Now you can use the silver side if you wanted to but for these tags i'm going to make some acetate tags using these and this is going to be the base so i'm going to show you how i do this with a die cutting machine you can use this product through your cricut machine and do a custom setting for a cut but if you don't have a cricut there is a way that you can do it even though the thin cuts don't cut all the way through i'm going to show you that it's quite quick and easy but I have quite a stash of this and I might be like some of you. I have precious papers, precious products that I put away and I've used some of this on some Christmas layouts in previous years. And while this is no longer available to order, I'm sure we've all got products like these in our stash that we really do need to start using. I love all of the patterns and they are perfect for Christmas projects. I was going to make some Christmas treat boxes out of them as well and I might do that if I have time for this year but for today I'm just going to use it on a tag. So I've got a piece here that I've already pre-cut and I just need to line this up with the tag that I'm using and run this through my die cutting machine. I'm only going to be running this through twice because it doesn't really cut all the way through, but it does leave enough of an impression. The thing that you do need to do with this is remove the film from this and I just use washi tape to peel it back. It's the same as our acetate in our shaker window elements. And then I can position this how I want it and run it through my die cutting machine. I'm only going to run through once and then back through the other way. That's all I'm going to do with it. And then you get a piece that looks like this. It hasn't cut quite all the way through, but it's left enough of an impression that you can line this up and with your scissors, and I'm using our micro tip scissors, which are wonderful, and you can just follow the edges around. It doesn't take long to do. I'm going fairly slowly and you can see, once I've found that groove, I can just slide the scissors up. I don't need to cut the whole time and I am angling it a little bit to go around the corners to give that soft edge that this tag usually gives. And then when I get this in the groove again, I can just slide down and then angle it around this corner as well. So that's pretty quick to do. I do need to take my scalpel and just follow along these edges here so that I've got somewhere to thread my ribbon. And because the thin cut has left an impression, this is all also fairly easily to do. Oh, I'm having trouble with words today. And then you'll find once you've gone around those edges, it will just pop out. And if it's being a little bit stubborn, you can just pull that section away. So now I'm gonna bring in the elements that I'm going to put on top. This little gnome, 
is from the Gnome for Christmas and I've colored him in and I've added some white detail with uh, the Jelly Roll number 10 white jelly pen. And this heart is from week four of the tags that I did. I kept them all in a pile for another project. So this is the inside section from those tags where I cut out this section here and I had the remaining part for the inside to use on another project. The best thing that I've found to adhere items to acetate is liquid glass. Now you don't need a whole lot because being acetate, this will smoosh out and I'm only putting a small amount on there. And obviously I have left this side of the tag free and with this one, I'm going to leave this part of his hat free of any liquid adhesive. So not too much at all. Oops. And before that goes down, I nearly forgot, I've got to put a little Merry Christmas off to the side as well. These are ones that I've used from the Holly and Ivy card making kit and I stamp them out and do a whole heap in one go when I want white heat embossing onto black cardstock and then they're ready for any project. So that's basically the tag and it looks really, really cute. I do need to attach and for this one, I'm just going to use white. Now, when we turn this over, you can see all of this on the back. So all I needed to do was run the thin cut through with the image. I don't need to do any stamping on it at all. And then I can cover that up. And this gives you a place to write your to and from. So I'm gonna line that up so that it matches. And for the heart, I've stamped a to and a from on there from another retired stamp set. It's no longer available, but there is something in the current catalog that has the to and the from on it. And I'm gonna match up that heart, put the tag topper on, and then I'm gonna put that aside with some stamp pads on it to adhere all of the liquid glue and to flatten that out. And then we're gonna move on to the next one. So with this wreath here, you'll notice you've got a thin cut for the wreath and a thin cut for the bow. And you can't line these up if you have stamped already. So you need to cut your piece out and then stamp. And it's the same with the bow. It's very hard to stamp it and then line it up because you can't see through these like you can with a lot of our other dies or thin cuts. So I've cut the wreath piece out and I've kept the piece that I've cut it from. I made sure to cut it in a little square so it fit in my misty. And then I can line the stamp up so that it fits around inside that section. And I've done exactly the same thing with the bow. I've lined up the stamp then I can secure this with my magnets. And then this will fit in like a little puzzle piece. You can't put magnets on this section here because that will raise it up too far and then the stamp won't go down onto the piece that you want to actually stamp. But because I've made this little jig, it will sit there. So you can ink this up and I'm using avocado ink. And then that will stamp and you can see it lifts it up because it doesn't have a magnet on it. And that's stamped really, really well. I'm really happy with that. But what I'm going to do is pop it back in. And it's really easy with this one because it's a repetitive pattern. So it's not unique. It doesn't change all the way around. So the pattern repeats. So you can pop that back in, ink up again. Now I use a face washer 
basically because I get a little bit sore with my wrist if I'm doing a lot of repetitive stamping. I keep this in with my stamp set so that I don't have to go through this every time, but I can cut a whole heap of these, line all of this up and just keep on inking up the next one. And then I can do exactly the same thing with the bow. And even though it looks like it's sitting up, if you're a bit worried, you can just bend it a little bit so that it will stay flat. And then I'm just going to get my candy apple ink. I just find sometimes I like to do a second impression and that's stamped perfectly in the center. And this is where a misty is really, really handy because that is not quite the best impression that I would like. And that is perfect. So by using, lining this up, keeping this negative space and using this as a jig or a template, you will get perfect stamping using your Misty. Now you can see I've stamped this one earlier. So the inks do dry off in a lighter color than when they're first originally stamped. And the beauty of this thin cut is that these pieces are semi cut through. So I can go around and flick those up and give a little bit more dimension. And I'm doing that now because when I put my liquid glass on there, I don't want to put liquid glass on the sections that I want to have raised. So let's bring in our tag. So I'm going to hold it this way so that I know not to put liquid glass on those outside bits there. And I'm just going around fairly lightly if I go a little bit too much, a bit too much flows out, I'm just spreading that out. And then I can line that up and put that straight onto my acetate tag. Now I will be putting the stamp pads on there to adhere everything and that will flatten that down again, but I can go back and flip those out. And now I'm going to put my bow on and you can see it's still moving around a little bit. It does take a while for the liquid glass to adhere. Now you could use foam tape on these. I've decided that I'm just going to make them all flat. And I'm just going to put a little notch in each edge to make a little banner. And I'm only going to put the liquid glass on each end of this so that you don't see that smooshing at the back. And that will be enough to hold it because you can see the glue from the back of the tag. And this one is going to have a gold foil tag topper. It would help if I had put this on straight. It hasn't quite set yet, so I can fix that up. And I've even got polka dots to line it up, so I shouldn't have got that crooked at all. So now I'm going to flip that over. And you can see the glue from behind, but we're going to cover that up with this one that I have already cut and obviously haven't stamped and line that up over the top. But before I do that, I'm going to, and I'm still going to be able to write over the top of these, I'm just going to stamp my to and from, and then I'm going to adhere this to the tag and I can see where I need to put my liquid glass for this one and then I just need to line this up so that it matches. So now I'm going to put this stack of stamp pads on top of that. It also helps squash them down and make things a little bit flat and not buckle and will help the liquid glass adhere. So this is the first one that I made on camera. I've got some other examples to show you and I'm just using some white ribbon that close to my heart used to carry to do the finishing off touch on this. So what I'm going to do is let this set and I'm going to clear everything away so I can show you the other tags that I've made using the acetate sheets. These are the two tags that I just made on camera. I, as I said, I do have some others to show you. I just wanted to show you that to 
lift these up I found it easier to use my piercing tool to get under there gently to bring these sections up I am going to add some carnation red liquid pearls and then I'm going to go around and just add a few little red dots here and there around the wreath I like doing these in threes it just seems to be more pleasing to the eye when you do things in odd numbers and that just adds a lovely little touch to the wreath and brings in a little bit more of the red from the bow and how gorgeous do these look that you can see through and you still get that lovely gold shine from the foil here's another one of the little christmas gnomes that i did and of course on the back there's a spot to write as well this was a wreath that I first had a little play with, but it's no longer available. But if you have it in your stash, it's just a wreath thin cut. And I used gold embossing for the leaves. So I had a little bit of a play with that. But then I found this one, the Serenity card making one. And as I said, that's still available. And I love how you can pop up those little bits of the wreath leaves. And here's another little fun one. I just need to trim off this end of the Merry Christmas. I've had so much fun creating these and actually using up some of the gold foil acetate that I have in my stash. I know I'm going to be making a lot more of these and going through my little tub of pre-done images so that I can use some of those up as well. They'll look gorgeous on gifts and the gold foil print on these acetate sheets really helps highlight and create a bit of fun and whimsy or a touch of elegance to a tag depending on what images you put on top. I hope this encourages you to use up items that you've got in your stash. So now that I've started playing with this, I am going to make sure that when these products come out, I'm actually going to use them and not just put them in the too precious pile. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed what I've done here today and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.